$700,000 to an African-American college student body president who had been attacked by those same neo-Nazis. Joining us now is Kristen Clark. She's president and executive director of the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights Under Law. Uh, Ms. Clark, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate you coming in. Thanks for having me. Let me first ask you, um, I, I tried to summarize the, the case, what happened to your client and what happened today in court. Did I basically get that right? You did. Okay. And let me just say that Taylor is a remarkable young woman. She is a courageous young woman, but she suffered tremendously uh, because of the incidents that you described. The, noose that was hung on campus, the banana peels, the racist trolling, and Anglin and Adelie Stormer indeed unleashed people on her and instructed them to go out and racially harass her, and they did. She suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder, she suffered tremendous weight loss, anxiety, depression, she was fearful walking around campus, she feared for her life. So she truly suffered, uh, but she found the courage in her to fight back. And that's why we filed this lawsuit on her behalf. So today is indeed a good day. Go get her. A federal judge, Judge Collier, found that uh, the Daily Stormer violated the law and violated her rights. And in particular found that by unleashing this racist, racist troll storm, they essentially denied her the right to enjoy uh, equal access to her campus, mm -hmm. American University. So it's a groundbreaking win. No federal court wow. has issued such a ruling before, and so this essentially provides a roadmap that can now be used by other litigators across the country who want to fight That's back and find other ways to hold white supremacists accountable. Part of what is obviously so compelling about this case is the story of your client, who is this remarkable and uh, blameless young woman who had this brought down on her for absolutely nothing that anybody could have ever associated with her, nothing imaginable. Part of it is that story of her getting this redress and the story as you describe it of her strength and deciding to pursue it in this way. It's also fascinating as a civil rights tactic um, and as an anti-terrorist And we are seeing, I've been sort of following over the course of this week, looking at different civil suits and other ways that activists and so attorneys and civil rights organizations and people trying to get justice for these she victims so have basically been trying to dismantle are you looking for snakes? The that are the there are no snakes in this house. I don't know that you're ever going to get this money from this guy. So that's right, Anglin is on the run. But look, if he steps foot in this country, his lawyer claims that he's out of the country in public. If he steps foot on U.S. soil, he cannot resurrect this operation again. Hmm. Because we now have a judgment that it's, that's been issued by a federal court. Don't do that. There's a fancy so couch. So kind of ripping the heart out of these operations and dismantling this infrastructure of white supremacy that is unleashing terror on people like Taylor Dunstan <laughs> all across our country. I'm really proud of the work that we are doing. Isn't she adorable? I mean, seriously. Oh, look out. You're eat her face. Eat her face. No. I eat her face. You should eat her face. It's delicious. You ever want to eat her face? You go ahead. And recruiting new members and doxing victims and you know unleashing Uh oh. Eat her face. Eat her face. We're gonna hold you accountable. You are not above the law. We are gonna. Are you cute? Or are you cute? We're not going to wait on the Justice are you Department cute? that is, uh, you know, is just simply not doing enough. We're going to use every tool when in our arsenal to, to school, fight back and let you're victims going to be so of much hate better. crimes across our country you know that there are civil rights lawyers who are prepared to stand <laughs> up for them and fight back. Diana so and Sabrina so are having so fun. How's your client doing? I mean, you opened your mouth about what she went through here. Uh-oh. Oh, I, I just announced the title and then you left. Um, obviously, she's in a different place yeah, in life now. It's been a very yeah. difficult couple of years. How, how does she feel about that? She feels oh, like she got her booty. Uh, the court found that what yeah. she experienced was based on her race and gender, mm -hmm. and that was important to her. What is going she's on? She's in law school now and wants to fight for justice. Oh, she's in law school. I'm tremendously proud of her. That is a perfect um, coda to this story tonight, although I know this isn't an Take oh, go go somewhere. Thank you so much. Oh, mess with grandma. No, you be careful you really see these things. I'm really interested in this. I'm really interested in the success. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, we're going to get to tonight. As I mentioned at the top of the show, Pulitzer Prize winning reporter David Fahrenthold will be here in just a moment with his 
uh, latest scoop, which the White House has zero answer for. Stay with us. <laughs> Diana, you look so funny. <laughs> Your percentage of the 